home at a Whopper? The Burger King Whopper not only defines the fast food chain, but is an iconic sandwich known and loved the world over. Despite this popularity, not many people know much about the Whopper beyond that it makes for a delicious lunch or dinner. We're here to rectify that and fill you in on 10 things you should know about Burger King Whoppers before biting. Homer eats Whopper takes 75. The Whopper is older than the Big Mac. Not old prospector. We all have heard about the fierce competition between Burger King and McDonald's. The two giants sell practically the same thing. They both had their humble beginnings around the middle of the 20th century. But long before McDonald's had introduced its famous Big Mac, the Whopper was sitting on customers' plates with its famous smile. In fact, the Whopper made its first appearance on the menu of Burger King in 1957. That's a full 11 years before the Big Mac became a thing in 1968. Long before burger joints knew that the size of the burger mattered, a burger place came up with the idea of serving an extra-large burger to its customers. The customer is always right. Jim McLemore, the co-founder of Burger King, wasn't going to let an opportunity like that pass. He decided to serve an even larger burger than the rival joint and named it the Whopper. The name implies something huge, and that was just the beginning of a marketing war that would target the consumer for decades to come. By the time McDonald's caught up on the size does matter mantra and introduced its Big Mac as a response, the fast food world would never be the same. So whether by chance or by choice, it looks like all of the Big Mac lovers out there have the Whopper to thank for it. Imagine if BK had never created the Whopper and Mickey D's had come up with the big burger idea first. Maybe we'd all be ordering Mick Whoppers today. You got the Whopper? Yeah. The first Whopper sold for 37 cents. Sold for 40 cents. You heard that right. 37 cents is the original price of the first ever Whopper to hit the menu and land on people's tables. Of course, what this means is that inflation has gone up, made a huge hole in the roof, and aimed for the sky. But let's not forget that this was 1957, after all. Baby boomers were making their way to the world at unprecedented rates, and life was much, much simpler back then. You could get three Whoppers for $1.11. Ah, dollar! Sounds like heaven, right? But to be fair, prices did drop back to close to its original price around 2012. While the average Whopper is about $4 and change, to celebrate the company's 55th anniversary, the price of the Whopper came down to 55 cents. Now that's something you don't see every day. Beating inflation, crushing the competition, and scoring a big PR hit all in one big swoop. For just $1.10, you could enjoy two Whoppers and feel like all was good with the world once again. Sadly, the good times don't last. Once the campaign was over, prices of the Whopper went back up to normal. And if you ordered two sandwiches, it would set you back a sawbuck. I got uh, brown sandwiches. The War of the Burgers. That's why they picked me to convince Congress to go to war. We hinted that there's a burger war going on between the two fast food giants, Burger King and McDonald's. Now, let's allow collaborate without belaboring the point. First off, as we already stated, the first large burger was Burger King's creation, not McDonald's. But how did the two iconic sandwiches, Big Mac and the Whopper, fare when squared off? Let's talk about the patty, because in the end, that's what the real comparison should be about. The Whopper comes with a quarter pound patty that is much larger than the patty you get with the Big Mac. The real comparable would be McDonald's quarter pounder, but without the same toppings as the Whopper. In fact, McDonald's had tried to come up with a similar quarter pound burger, too. You know what they call a quarter pound of a cheese in France. However, that sandwich, the big and tasty, didn't stand the test of time. So comparing patty to patty, the Whopper wins big time over the Big Mac. That doesn't mean that the two franchises haven't been stealing ideas from each other since forever. In 1997, the year McDonald's had tried to introduce the big and tasty, a direct competitor to the Whopper, Burger King tried to seduce the customers with a double patty called the Big King. Even the name was derivative. Neither of those attempts at beating the competition by copying it, nor any other attempt since then, had managed to lure customers. So it seems the war of the burgers will continue, which is probably a good thing for the consumer. Having a longtime rival only keeps everyone on their toes, forcing each restaurant to continuously improve, which usually results in new and tasty menu options for us all. Please just let us purge.
the angry whopper. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Change is the key to keeping your customers happy. That's the credo of every fast food chain out there. You can't just sit on your laurels and hope that your happy customers will keep coming back and eating the same food you offer them. Because that just doesn't happen. People get tired of the same menu and demand something new every now and then. So Burger King, not being the company to let people down, decided to bring in something new to spice the menu up. And spice it up, it sure did. Using a hot concoction of jalapeno jalapeno, pepper jack cheese, and spicy crispy onions, one creative and possibly vindictive chef came up with the perfect spicy Whopper. That was in 2009, and the Angry Whopper, as it was called, had a mixed reaction. Some people thought it was excessively spicy and that every meal brought tears to their eyes, not out of fondness or nostalgia, but out of compassion to their burning mouths. Other customers, though, were not that impressed. They stated that the spicy Whopper wasn't spicy enough and pointed to a meal at Taco Bell's for reference. Needless to say, the whole fire was put out pretty soon, since the Angry Whopper was, after all, a limited edition not meant to last. However, a few years later, in 2016 to be exact, another incarnation of the Angry Whopper manifested itself on the menu with more spiciness. This one was called the Angriest Whopper. Burger King should really hire some new talent for their naming department. Yeah, but I can't just breeze into the philology department. How the Whopper Jr. came into existence. Burger King's most famous sandwich. As American painter and visionary Bob Ross used to say, there are no mistakes only happy accidents. And the story of the Whopper Jr. is a confirmation of that. It all started in 1963 in Puerto Rico. There was a new Burger King restaurant about to open and everybody was getting hyped about it. Not least of all, the owner, Luis Arenas Perez. But as with all big events, there's always something that comes up last minute and threatens to spoil the fun for everybody. In this case, it was the absence of the bread molds. Since this was the first Burger King to open in Carolina, Puerto Rico, Rico, nobody had the molds for the buns. Deep in some buns, son! You can't make buns without molds, and the Whopper has its own custom-made molds due to its size. So now what? Perez cannot delay the grand opening because the molds haven't arrived from the States yet. At the same time, he can't just dish out Whoppers in regular buns and hope nobody would notice. And that's when the happy accident came to the world. Perez decided on the spot to use regular buns and named the creation Whopper. Whopper Jr. And that's how quick thinking can save the day. You saved us. What's in a burger? What is the Whopper burger? We all love our burgers. Can you imagine a burger without cheese? Doesn't feel right, right? The same applies to the patty. It wouldn't be called a burger if there was no burger in it. But have you ever wondered what's in the patty itself? We always fuss about the sauce and the extra cheese, but we never take the time to ask about the burger patty itself. We just take it for granted that the patty has beef. At least that's what Burger King had us believe for years. Until 2013, that is. Burger King had to reveal that some of the patties used in its burgers, notably the ones stuffing the Whopper's buns, had horse meat in them. That's right, I bought a horse! This debacle took place in the UK. There was an outcry and immediate repercussions. The Irish supplier responsible for this scandal lost his contract with Burger King and the company took its business elsewhere, notably to Germany and Italy. We're not saying that Burger King knew about it and covered it up, because that's not what happened. We're just saying it's always prudent to find out what's in that burger, just in case, right? Not enough time to explain all the fresh ingredients in the Whopper sandwich. You can't call it Whopper here. It tasted just like a Whopper should taste. Texas is a state with its own style, culture, and way of life. And Texans are proud people, maybe even more so than any other state. And Burger King was about to know firsthand one thing or two about this famed Texan pride. San Antonio is a wonderful city. It always has been, except for one small flaw. It didn't have a Burger King. To remedy this shock oversight, the company made arrangements to open a few outlets in the city post-haste. But there was a small problem. Houston, we have a problem. Another burger chain called Whopper Burger was using the W word, not just in its name, but in the menu items. Moreover, that small local chain had the copyrights to the word Whopper in the city. So even though Burger King was operating in the city, it couldn't use the W word in its advertising. Not in San Antonio.
Romeo you don't. That went on for years. The famous Whopper was called Deluxe, and nobody was happy about it. It wasn't until the owner of Whopper Burger had passed, and his widow had agreed to sit down at the table and negotiate, that a solution to the stalemate had been reached. In 1983, the widow agreed to sell her franchise to Burger King, and San Antonio was able to order a Whopper from Burger King for the first time ever. Tastes like a Whopper. The Halloween Whopper. I want my Whopper. No, this is not a fairy tale. Everything about this story is true and verified. And it's not the first time Burger King has tried to spook its customers with a scary-looking bun, either. Back in 2014, a genius from marketing decided to celebrate Halloween with a black Whopper. Except it wasn't a Whopper at all. It was a black bun with A1 steak sauce, and it was aptly called A1 Halloween Whopper. A Halloween party at our house. Needless to say, the freaky-looking bun had failed to impress anyone, let alone Whopper fans who immediately saw the ruse and shunned this imposter in Whopper clothes. But you know what they say in marketing, if you fail once, just keep hammering the customers with similar ideas until they get tired and give up. Four years later, in 2018, another monstrosity came out from the kitchens of Burger King, also to supposedly celebrate Halloween. But this time, it was green, and it was called Nightmare King. At least they got the name right this time. This nightmare didn't last long. Pretty soon, people pinched themselves awake and went back to their regular Whoppers. Two Whoppers a week for the last 20 years. Lose a friend for a Whopper. Can we please be friends? We all know how fickle some friends are. You know which ones. They're never there when we need them, and they only seem to contact us when they need something. Not the ideal kind of friend you'd like to have. This applies more to Facebook friends than any other friends anywhere else. To help you shed this unnecessary burden of unwanted and ungrateful friends, Burger King invited people to trade their Facebook friends for a Whopper. Not a bad deal, eh? All you had to do was unfriend 10 people on Facebook and you get one Whopper. I love Whoppers. I've turned Burger King into a crime scene. For that deal, I delete my entire Facebook account. But Facebook wasn't happy, naturally. It insisted on letting the unfriended friends know that they were not worth one Whopper to someone, which is harsh and cold to say the least. Why would Facebook want to bring misery to its users in such a fashion? Anyway, that request put Burger King and its program in a tight spot, so to speak. And fearing a backlash, the campaign was pulled quickly. But not before it broke up over 234,000 online friendships. Well, you know your friendship isn't up to snuff when your so-called friend is willing to sell you for a Whopper. Are you kidding me? You paid $26 for a Whopper? The Whopper and Ellen DeGeneres go way Way back. We now return to Ellen only talks when her guest is talking. So what happens when you're invited to perform your comedy sketch on stage, but you don't really have anything? All the material is gone and your silver tongue has turned to lead. This is the exact situation young Ellen DeGeneres found herself in when she was just 20 years old and still trying to find her first steps in the world of stand-up comedy. I love making people happy and making people feel good. Her friends had urged her to go up and wow the audience that night. But Ellen was too scared to say anything, so she did the only thing any of us would do in this situation. She picked up her Whopper, milkshake, and fries and took them with her to the stage. There, she proceeded to eat without saying a word. Did the audience heckle her? How can you heckle a girl eating a Whopper? Nobody was satisfied with this performance, except Ellen herself, who was really full after that meal. But her food demonstration wasn't a total loss. A few days later, she was invited to perform at a university campus, and this time she went on stage with some good material. Smooth. You can always find more great Babble Top videos right here. Just tap on that screen. And if you haven't joined our notification squad yet, what are you waiting for? Show us some love and slam that subscribe button and click that bell.